So you want a T16 build for the monk? I got you. Let's do this. So we all know that Inna's Monk has been dominant for seasons. In season 27, it got a huge nerf, which people had questioned, what's gonna happen to Inna's Monk? And I found it out. It's If you're a Monk main, T16s is where it's at for the Inna's Monk build in season 27 and probably the foreseeable future. So let's get into a few different build types that I have for this, and then we're gonna do a rift and show you everything that you need to do for the build, okay? So let's get into it. All right, so we have a couple different versions here, all right? So we have the originals in this build, which is really, really great. This is what we you kind of used to use to GR push. You can use this for uh, T16s. You just swap out the Bane of the Powerful for the Boon of the Hoarder. It'll work just fine, okay? But if you want to mix it up, I have two different styles here that you're going to go through and just do. One is going to be the T16 Dash, uh, which combines not only the Inna set, but, but the um, the Remnant of the Thousand Storm set, which is going to allow you to sprint or dashing strike, but re refunds a charge. But you're going to be spending a lot of spirit to do it, but you will have infinite dashes so you can get around the map super, super fast. The next one and the one that I recommend that you guys use is this one. This is the T16 two hand, okay? So let's break down everything that you're gonna need. You're gonna need five pieces of the Inna set, guys. You guys all know Inna's. Everything is done through our water allies that we have for the build. So I've combined this with the Warzian chain arm guards for more speed every time your spear or your water allies are absolutely destroying things. Then we got the, what is that, the solo QI? I'm saying this wrong. The solo koi, so, uh, cyclone strike reduces damage. And then we got gold wrap for just to be immortal with Avarice band on our follower. And then we have our Ingium as well as Echoing Fury in the weapons. Okay. Now there is going to be a couple things that you can change out guys. If you don't want to rock these two weapons, you could definitely swap these out. You put the staff back in here. Okay. And then you swap out the boots for uh, Crudus boots, or you could swap out the gloves for Mage Fist or Frostburn again and do this. This is also very strong. And then in the cube, you keep Ingium in there with Crudus boots. This is also very, very strong if you don't want to rock. What I'm about to, I need to swap out Ingium, but you can do this. But we're going to rock this for the purposes of the video today. So you got this, okay? And then we got uh, both of those Ingium to reset our uh, cooldowns, as well as Echoing Fury for attack speed and move speed. All right, and then we for our rings and amulets, of course, squirts combined with uh, focus and restraint for just uh, massive amounts of damage. And then for our gems, uh, we have Bane of the Trapped, Boon of the Hoarder, and then Enforcer because technically this is a pet build. So let's get over into the cube, guys. Ingium, this is actually going to be Messershit's Reaver. That's actually what that's going to be. So let me just double save. There we go. Boom. So you got the uh, Reaver to reduce cooldowns, which is great every time we slay an enemy, which should be nonstop. Crudus Boots for uh, ally Mystic Allies, they deal more damage, and then Ring of Royal Grandeur to complement the set. Into our skills, pretty much nothing changes here, okay, from the normal setup. Wave of the 100 Fists, uh, Blazing Fist, Cyclone Strike Implosion, uh, Dashing Strike Radiance, uh, Serenity, uh, Ascension for damage reduction, and then Epiphany for immortality, uh, or excuse me, Ascension is for Immortality, Epiphany for um, to dash around and get around faster, as well as replenishing our Spirit, and then Mystic Ally, Water Ally, pretty standard. If you wanted to swap out Ascension because you're killing everything so fast in T16, I definitely recommend doing a uh, Mantra. You could do any one of the Mantras, whichever ones that work best for you, any of the ones in here, Healing, Retribution, Salvation, Conviction, just pick one, it's totally up to you. Into our Passives. Uh, because we're not really going to die at all, you could keep the, uh, the you know, the faint death, you know, your one death trick. If you, especially if you're on hardcore, I always keep that. But since we're on softcore, season initiative, beacon of uh, Atar, relentless assault, and then unity. But what we are going to do is we're going to swap out unity for the guardian's path. Okay, so we want, we want guardian's path in here uh, just for more damage, okay? Because we get our spirit generation back faster with that. So that is the build, guys. It's everything that you need for it. So let's break down into a rift just to showcase this build and show you how strong it is for T16s. Oh, I should do note, should do note while you're in here for your follower. Okay, I don't have her completely decked out, but I'm going to break down everything that you need for her. Nemesis bracers, flavor of time, uh, homing pads, gloves of worship, and then... Your other two main things are Avarice Band for Immortality for your character, and then Royal Run Grand Door to complement both these sets, okay? Anytime you're doing T16, you need to have Sages, and you need to have 
uh, canes to give extra keys and extra death breaths. Okay, so make sure you have that on your follower. Otherwise, all the skills are kind of the same and then always keep your fates laps. Let's get in and rock this. So the build is pretty straightforward, guys. You're going to dash, get around. You want to get your blazing fist going, get all your water allies, pop ally and epiphany, and then you're just, just going to dash around. Now, we do want to kill as many things as possible uh, to keep our cooldowns going, and you want to look for elites to really get that um, NGM really rocking, okay? The Messer Ships Reaver is really going to help you in this build uh, to keep cooldowns going. This is bad right now. We don't have any any uh, elites at all. It'd be great if we could get out of the god dang spider land. There we go. Give me some of these. Give me this. Give me the, There we go. Now we can rock. As soon as you get your first elite, you just dash around. You can get around super fast. That 10 seconds is crucial, okay? We are so bad right now. This map sucks, guys. This is a bad example. This map is doo-doo for this build. There we go. Hit the power pylon. Get it rocking. Get your 100 fists going. What's that? All you got to do in this build, guys, if you want to pick up anything, is this death breath and all of your legendaries that drop. Otherwise, you can literally just dash around and kill everything. You see the speeds on here? You see it, guys. You see the speeds. It's pretty easy to play. You just dash around, kill everything in sight. That's all you got to do. Super easy, super fast. Guys, I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to rival not only multi-shot but it also rivals my favorite t16 build which is the uh Seder, the thor Seder build which i'll link above guys that build is absolutely insane so if you like t16 pushing and you like crusader definitely check that out but you can see we dash around and just kill everything the build is so flow you guys know the build we've been playing it for multiple seasons but this in t16 is is very very strong our abilities are non-stop up. They're always up with Ingium and Reaver. And then we get our Rift Guardian. Easy Merc. No problem. Boom. Easy peasy. And that is the Ennis build for T16 pushing in Season 27. T16 farming. Get all your keys. Get your, get your, uh, you know, your death breaths. All that good stuff. Farm up everything, guys. That is Ennis for uh, Season 27 for T16. If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new here, guys. As always, stay gaming. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.